This episode of County by County is brought to you by these sponsors. Good evening and thanks for joining us for this first News at 9 special presentation of our County by County series. Tonight our focus is on La Crosse County and over the next 30 minutes we'll spotlight local businesses, historic sites and major developments aiming to help La Crosse County grow into the future. We begin our evening with a trip to the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which may be the best kept secret in La Crosse County. Just south of the city of La Crosse and west of the town of Shelby, you'll find what many consider to be one of the hidden gems of La Crosse County, the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. As Executive Director Father Paul Check explains, the shrine is meant to complement Catholic traditions. So a shrine is not a parish, but it is another place where Catholics go to, to worship and to receive grace. So this particular shrine was dedicated in 2008, and it is dedicated particularly to uh, the Mother of God under the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Pilgrims come to honor her and to bring their petitions. Father Check recalls how special the shrine felt to him as soon as he first arrived, a sentiment that many other visitors share. I think it's a common experience that when people get on the campus of the shrine, they feel something different. I know that certainly happened to me when I came here almost four years ago. There was a sense of peace and that this place is not only a place of natural beauty, but there is something that is a, a, a blessing. While word of the shrine has continued to spread since it was first dedicated. Uh, last year, I think we had our largest year ever for pilgrims. Over 100,000 people came. Father Check welcomes anyone, whether they're Catholic or not, to come and experience the shrine for themselves. I understand that there are many who do not know it, and we are always at work trying to find ways to engage people and to invite them to come here for a pilgrimage. We're eager to welcome them, and I think that they will find on this campus uh, that grace and peace and that friendship uh, in Christ, which is something which is so important to all of us. For County by County, Alex Loroff, First News at 9. Our next story takes us to one of the 23 Franciscan universities in the United States. Viterbo University has been part of La Crosse County for more than a century, and staff share how Viterbo continues to provide high-quality education for thousands of students every year. Viterbo was founded by the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration, and when they came to this community, they came to serve the local needs. All of the programs that we have are developed really designed to support both Wisconsin, the region, and the healthcare needs, the educational needs of our community. Viterbo really stands out for high quality education in a lot of ways. I mean, we have uh, people here that care about students and want to see them succeed. We've got excellent programs and we've been doing this for a long time. Most students look at Viterbo because of what we offer academically. We do a pretty good job of offering traditional daytime, face-to-face, in-person classes over the years growing and offering a few more fully online programs. Part of the vision of Viterbo is to prepare students for collaboration, service, and leadership. Our students throughout their curriculum, whether it's in their Viterbo mission seminar courses, their core curriculum, or within their major itself, they're going to have experiences that get them out in the community. Our community engages in a lot of ways, and so we have advisory boards that help tell our programs what they need, what do they need in the industry. One great example of how students are engaging in the local community is our direct entry MSN program. In that program, those students are out and engaging and are expected to build relationships in the community. Education is often, you know, what you're learning in the classroom, but a lot of what our students at Viterbo do is getting out into the field and actually doing the work. It's a good collaboration between learning and getting out and doing. I mean, a lot of our academic programs, students don't have to wait around for a semester or a year before they're able to get out into the businesses, the organizations that they want to work for. So the Turbo students are really prepared well for careers. It's about learning not just the technical skills you need for your career or your vocation, but also then getting the growth and, and leadership you need beyond that. 
After the break, an update on Mayo Clinic Health System's new multi-million dollar La Crosse Hospital. Welcome to Crossroads Bar and Grill. Dive into our legendary happy hour specials featuring 50% off all appetizers, $1 off the entire front page of our drink menu, and buy two, get one free from our rotating draft list. But that's not all. Kids eat free every Tuesday. Treat yourself to our mouthwatering half-pound Angus beef burgers perfectly paired with one of our signature drinks. Looking for some excitement? Step into the zone where you can test your skills in our batting cages or hone your skills in our golf simulator. And don't forget to satisfy your sweet tooth at our Crossroads Ice Cream Parlor. Join us at Crossroads Bar and Grill. Welcome back. After breaking ground nearly two years ago, construction continues on Mayo Clinic Health System's new multi-million dollar La Crosse Hospital. First News at Nine's Dashiell Mensel gives an update on the project's progress and explains how the new hospital will help the community. Mayo Clinic Health System announced the construction of a new six-story, 70-bed hospital in La Crosse in February of 2022. Southwest Wisconsin Regional Chair of Facilities and Support Services, Karen Finleyman Killinger, says the construction has gone remarkably well. We're at 528 days of safe um, work on the site. Also, we've had great weather for a construction project of this length. I think we've only had one or two bad weather days, so that helps um, lead to hitting our schedule and also maintaining our budget. Finneman Killinger adds the construction project provides a variety of sustainability efforts. We have a geothermal system being installed and it's a new technology, so that's adding a lot of efficiency to our building. We also have what's called an energy use intensity goal, which basically just means that we have calculated a, a goal for energy and we've designed the hospital to make sure that we are at a much reduced energy use. Mayo Clinic Health System Operations Administrator Christine Feller says the decreased amount of square footage of the new hospital along with its increased number of beds will be beneficial to both patients and staff. We really looked to the future when we were preparing for this project and continued to partner across our institution on leveraging technology. Um, we're a service industry, so we're, we're always going to be people focused. Feller hopes the new hospital will bring support to the lacrosse community for years to come. I think what's most important for our patients, um, many of your viewers, uh, like me, were born in our institution and really looking for the future of um, visiting their family members will hear what uh, this project does for our community is really shows our investment in long-term high-quality care. Construction of the new hospital is expected to be completed later this summer with new patients being accepted sometime in the fall. For County by County, Dashiell Mensel, First News at 9. Thanks, Dashiell. Our next story takes a look at a lacrosse business that's been helping keep the community's vehicles running for more than 50 years. My grandpa started this business back in 1967 as a small radiator repair shop, and his intent was to give good pricing, to make sure these vehicles were fixed right, and that customers come back happy, and to treat others how you would want to be treated. After my dad and my uncle took over as a second generation, they built this company bigger than I think they ever thought was possible because of the steps that my grandpa implemented early on. And as your third generation owner, I will continue in my grandfather's footsteps. Beeline to us is extremely important between the equipment that we have to be able to do the alignments that we do from small cars to lacrosse's very own fire trucks. And I take a lot of pride to say that we have state-of-the-art equipment to be able to do this stuff. We date back to the old Beeline stick and bubble and gauge. I mean, we can do it all if the computers fail. There is no head scratching. We pick up the old ways like my grandpa started in 67, just like he did, and we're able to perfect that alignment. We ship U-bolts, we ship springs all over the country. That's something that my father and my uncle were able to accomplish. I want to thank the employees that have been working here since 67 that have made this possible, because without them, there is nothing. I want to thank the customers that have been here since 1967 on top of the new generation of customers that continue to trust me with their vehicle. It means the world to me and I take so much pride in being able to fix your car and fix it right. 
And I just want to thank everybody for that trust because moving forward, it's, it's very exciting for me to be able to stand behind the desk and be behind the counter and do what I do in back working on your vehicle. I really appreciate that. We'll head to West Salem next to look at historic sites and a popular family-run bar and grill. During Markdown Madness at Doll Auto, choose from over 1,300 vehicles with special sales event pricing. Then make no payments until June, plus get $250 in accessories. Make a fast break to Doll Auto. Did you touch the thermostat? Did you turn it up? Of course not. Did somebody fiddle with the thermostat? Dude, it's 85 degrees. 85? Do you have any idea what a couple degrees will do to our gas bill? Why is it so hot here? Someone turned up the heat. God. What do you think you're doing? I like to sleep with my window open. You are not supposed to touch a thermostat. Let us give it to you straight. It takes experience to get to the top, and at Murphy's Frame and Axle, we've got over 50 years under the hood. Experience to keep you moving forward, to leave our legacy. At Murphy's, we're your one-stop shop for light and heavy-duty repair. Frame and axle, air conditioning, exhaust, custom springs, tires, brakes, and so much more. This experience keeps you on the road. Murphy's Frame and Axle. We make them go straight. Welcome to Crossroads Bar and Grill. Dive into our legendary happy hour specials featuring 50% off all appetizers, $1 off the entire front page of our drink menu, and buy two, get one free from our rotating draft list. But that's not all. Kids eat free every Tuesday. Treat yourself to our mouth-watering half-pound Angus beef burgers perfectly paired with one of our signature drinks. Looking for some excitement? Step into the zone where you can test your skills in our batting cages or hone your skills in our golf simulator. And don't forget to satisfy your sweet tooth at our Crossroads Ice Cream Parlor. Join us at Crossroads Bar and Grill. your own five-star experience at Doll Auto. We head now to West Salem as members of the West Salem Historical Society are encouraging others in the area to dive into the town's history. First News Nine's Dashiell Menzel visited West Salem and takes a look at the history of the Historical Society. The West Salem Historical Society has preserved three historic houses in West Salem, the Hamlin Garland House and the Palmer Brothers Octagons. The society was founded by former history teacher Errol Kinshi. I came to West Salem in 1959 as a teacher in the high school. I was teaching history and civics. I love history, always have loved history, and I love to get kids interested in history. It's not boring, it's fun. Kinshi began realizing the love people had for the history of the town when he wrote a 67-page book on the history of West Salem. So he charged a dollar apiece for him. Two weeks later, they were all sold out. So I knew there was an interest in West Salem history because that book was nothing to be bragging about. But it was a start. According to Kinshi, the West Salem Historical Society currently has around 1,500 members from 42 states. One of those members is Patsy Hoffer, who has lived in West Salem her whole life. We have had people from all 50 states and from a number of different countries. And there's so much that has gone on in West Salem with the businesses that have been here and the number of important people who have come from West Salem. Kinji says he's enjoyed history his entire life, and ever since he's moved to West Salem, he's wanted to make sure the town's history will be preserved for all to see. Because you got to see it. You can read about it, but if you don't see it, you don't get the feeling. And that's the whole idea. You go through a house and it kind of kind of comes off on you. You kind of remember it. From the writing of author Hamlin Garland and the movement of the Octagon Houses, there's plenty of history among the three houses. For County by County, Dasha Menzel, First News at 9. Staying in West Salem, whether it's enjoying a burger or taking an event at the Field House, Features in West Salem offers a little bit of something for everyone. And as the owners explain, it's quite the family affair. I am Jason Slosser, and I am the owner here at Features Sports Bar and Grill and Features Fieldhouse. 
My uncle bought it in 85, and then I bought it from him in 2006. I think one of the very last family-run operations that you'll hear about during COVID, I mean, where a lot of restaurants shut down, we made a conscious choice. You know, I, I vocally said, here's the deal, we can hang it up until this thing gets done, or we can work it ourselves, and it's just gonna be us. You know, like eat, breathe, sleep with your family from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed every single day. I can't give enough credit to our staff. We've been blessed to have the individuals that have been with us from the very beginning. But I think what sets us apart is that we've always got that familiar face, whether it be behind the bar or serving them. And I think our customers appreciate that. My name is Heather Antony. I am general manager, part owner. We enjoy running fundraisers for a lot of community events to help raise money for nonprofits, uh, right, doing bowling fundraiser tournaments, bingo. We have like our nights where people can come in and a percentage of the bill will go back to that group as well too along with now the Fieldhouse holding a ton of fundraising events. I'm Jen Slesser. I'm the owner of Features Fieldhouse and Features West Salem. The Fieldhouse opened in May this year of 2023. Having just the ability to accommodate so many different options, you know, you can come in here. We have people on Saturday mornings and play pickleball and go have a bloody over, you know, walk 10 feet across the parking lot and go have bloody and breakfast. Um, it's a great way to socialize. We also are the only privately owned facility like this here. And then having the upper mezzanine bar and lounge area. You don't get that anywhere else. The easiest way to reach us is going on to our website. The website is www.featuresfieldhouse.com. Easy to find. On there is all of our information, our phone number. We don't necessarily have direct hours, so it's best to always email and see what's going on and if we're open. After the break, the latest on a significant lacrosse development that's finally getting underway. Welcome to Feature Sports Bar and Grill, West Salem, a place where food, bowling, and sports collide. Our menu is packed with delicious food options for everyone. And with our bowling lanes and Features Fieldhouse offering basketball, volleyball, pickleball, and more, there's something for everyone. Whether you're craving great food, looking for some friendly competition, Feature Sports Bar and Grill has you covered. Visit us today and make every moment a winning one at Feature Sports Bar and Grill, West Salem. Let us give it to you straight. It takes experience to get to the top, and at Murphy's Frame and Axle, we've got over 50 years under the hood. Experience to keep you moving forward, to leave our legacy. At Murphy's, we're your one-stop shop for light and heavy-duty repair. Frame and Axle, air conditioning, exhaust, custom springs, tires, brakes, and so much more. This experience keeps you on the road. Murphy's Frame and Axle. We make them go straight. Welcome back. For years, the City of La Crosse has been working towards building a new district that will create more housing opportunities, among other uses, that will help the city. First News at 9's Dashiell Menzel has more on the continued development of the River Point District. Plans for La Crosse's River Point District neighborhood have been in the works since 1995, when the city began buying parcels of land for development within the larger overall site. It was centrally located. It's right on the, uh, on the north end of the city's downtown. It's right where the three rivers come together, the Black River, La Crosse River, and Mississippi. And uh, the site had been uh, had some pollution that needed to be cleaned up, and it just represented a great opportunity for the city to redevelop it. Project manager Jason Gilman says the River Point District will provide plenty of housing opportunities. This is, you know, uh, probably going to be about 1,200 housing units, probably over three hundred million dollars in investment and tax base. Um, it's a transit oriented development which means it's served by public transportation. Uh, many of the architects and developers that are working on it are employing smart technology for energy efficiency in the buildings. La Crosse Redevelopment Authority Chair Adam Hatfield says it's exciting to see a project this big in the city. We want to create density in the city. So River Point's a, a fantastic way to create that density, create new tax base for the city, and again, create something that's brand new and really something this size hasn't been seen in a long, long time for La Crosse. The River Point District will have many things embedded in it, including businesses, market rate housing, mixed income housing, and waterfront access. The neighborhood's more than housing. It's creating senses of community, uh, creating senses of uh, public space, of green space. Um, and really making it, again, connected to a lot of the things that um, people enjoy in lacrosse and really make, make lacrosse special. 
Jason Gilman calls this one of the most important developments in the state of Wisconsin right now because of its size and complexity. We've had uh, uh, residents who have lived in La Crosse that may live in a different state inquire about living here, or returning to La Crosse because of this development. Uh, I would say that on average we get uh, anywhere from uh, four to ten inquiries a day on people that want to live in the development. Gilman says most of the site will be built by 2026. For County by County, Dash Menzel, First News at 9. Thanks, Dashiell. Our next local business spotlight tonight takes a look at a unique bar and grill that offers an uplifting message to the community. My name is Austin Ross. I am the owner of Crossroads as a whole, and I run all three businesses, Crossroads Bar and Grill, Crossroads Ice Cream Parlor, and The Zone. I've been in La Crosse County for pretty much my whole life. The business has been here for just over two years now. We just had two years, December 3rd. A lot of businesses around here don't really have what we offer as a whole. Because, um, I mean, we're, we're a one-stop shop. So, I mean, we got food, appetizers, drinks over here. You can get ice cream across the street. Um, you can go play sports if you want, batting cages, golf simulators, stuff like that. So if you're kind of waiting for food, you can go over there, hang out if you want, or you want ice cream over here, they'll bring it over and kind of vice versa. I pretty much just wanted to do something that no one's ever done in the area, essentially. We wanted to put all kind of aspects of what is popular in, in lacrosse and just kind of build off of that. So I like to think we have some of the best burgers in lacrosse. We got 100% grass-fed, certified Angus beef, big half-pound burgers. We got really good fries, home of the crack fries as well, it's special seasoning we make. 24 flavors of chocolate chop ice cream, always swapping out the flavors. We got kind of our eight staple flavors, uh, but we're always rotating, always putting new flavors in, so there's always something new. The golf simulator has 48 or 50 courses, I think, and they're always adding new ones. There's seven different cameras that are kind of watching the ball, so it's it's very true to life. We're expanding the upstairs, so we're going to be building a balcony up here. That whole upstairs is going to be our new crossroads pool and dart lounge. So there's going to be two pool tables, four dart boards. Um, we're going to be hosting a lot of leagues upstairs and stuff like that. The name Crossroads Bar and Grill or crossroads in general, it's meant to be symbolic between crossroads and the individual's life between either living for the world or living for Jesus. And this is a very faith-based business and everything we do is very faith-centered. Our final stories are up next, including an in-depth look at one of the biggest businesses based in La Crosse. Viterbo University has the power to get you connected. Connected to your passions, to the future, and to your art. Viterbo University has been shaping the future since 1890. A university that's private, not pricey. Where you can invest in yourself for the world you want to make with a four-year graduation guarantee. No application fees and 100% job placement. So you can say, Viterbo got me connected. Viterbo got me connected. Viterbo University, get connected. Welcome to Feature Sports Bar and Grill, West Salem, a place where food, bowling, and sports collide. Our menu is packed with delicious food options for everyone. And with our bowling lanes and Features Fieldhouse offering basketball, volleyball, pickleball, and more, there's something for everyone. Whether you're craving great food, looking for some friendly competition, Feature Sports Bar and Grill has you covered. Visit us today and make every moment a winning one at Feature Sports Bar and Grill, West Salem. Welcome back. The Dahl family has been part of the automobile industry in La Crosse County for more than a century, and the latest generation is continuing to honor their family's legacy while also moving Dahl into the future. I'm Jansen Dahl, and I am vice president of Dahl Automotive Holdings for our dealership group and a part owner. Uh, Andrew Dahl, and president of the Dahl Automotive Group and also a part owner. We've been serving the lacrosse community for uh, over 110 years. In the lacrosse market specifically, we've been here since 1915. It is a great family history that goes back to our family that immigrated over from Norway in the 1800s and the passion that they had for, you know, the American way of life. Before we were in the car business, we were in the general store business. So we had a general store in West Peak. Ford Motor Company at that time was looking for dealers. And so we applied uh, to be uh, an agent and we were accepted to be the Ford agent uh, for Ford Motor Company. You know, our dealerships are full service dealerships, right? So we provide service repair, parts, 
We have used vehicle sales, new vehicle sales. We have auto body repair. You know, we really see ourselves as a one-stop shop. We created the museum in 2011 uh, in honor of our 100th anniversary of doing business as an auto dealer. The museum is great. It's a big attraction for La Crosse County. We have automobiles in this museum from every decade that we've done business back to 1911. Um, so it's really become a great attraction for the city of La Crosse. One of our core values at the automotive is giving back to the communities that we serve. Each of our dealerships uh, is kind of aligned with different uh, nonprofits and um, sponsorship events. I think La Crosse is a great size city for, for our family and for our business. I'm proud to have you know been born and raised here. We're really fortunate to be able to be an auto dealer in this community. You know, people's transportation is pretty important, their vehicle. And you know, we've got this awesome opportunity as the auto dealer to be this intermediary between uh, individuals' transportation and the rest of their life. Our final story of the night is all about a Wisconsin staple. I'm sure the majority of you watching have been to Quick Trip, and for 50 years, the company has continued to grow, all while being based in La Crosse County. And although there are hundreds of stores across the Midwest, Quick Trip has no plans on slowing down. To serve our customers and community more effectively than anyone else by treating our customers, coworkers, and suppliers as we personally would like to be treated and to make a difference in someone's life. That's the mission statement that has helped Quick Trip evolve from a single store in Eau Claire nearly 60 years ago into a chain of more than 870 stores with over 38,000 co-workers employed. For public relations specialist Ben Leibel, that growth all starts with the company's culture. When our guests go into our stores, uh, we want to treat them with uh, a smile on our face and um, by the end of it, we want to say, see you next time. Uh, so we want everyone to know that they're always welcome in our stores. That culture is what helps social media specialists McKenna Schmidke and Hayden Canole connect with guests even after they leave a store. We kind of encompass the Midwestern personality, Wisconsinites, Minnesotans, and they, they really like that they're able to relate to a company kind of on a first-hand basis. If it wasn't for our amazing company, I don't think people would engage quite like they do. So it's kind of cool to see the Midwest just going hand-in-hand -hand with Quick Trip. Making quality products is also a significant focus for Quick Trip, so much so that Chief Scientific Officer Jay Ellingson says there are thousands of tests done in-house every week to ensure that quality. We're the only retailer that I know in the United States that has an on-site state-of-the-art laboratory that does the testing technology every day. And so it's very unique in the way that we handle our, if you will, our safety and quality of that product. Another unique aspect of Quick Trip's operation is how the company builds up its stable of delivery drivers. Director of Transportation Jared Rask says there's always a need, so Quick Trip provides CDL classes to give prospective drivers the training they need. We take in, um, you know, 50 to 60 applicants a year, and, and we basically train them to be drivers. And, you know, we really pride ourselves on having the best drivers, and we have a phenomenal training program that takes them from a non-commercial motor vehicle driver to, you know, one of the best drivers on the road. More and more drivers are needed to keep up with the ever-increasing volume of delivery, which is only expected to go up as Quick Trip continues to grow. So we're going to expand our footprint in South Dakota. Uh, we're adding six new stores out in that market on top of the six that we already have. Uh, we'll be entering the North Dakota market as well. Uh, and then we will be building about 40 to 50 new stores uh, moving forward. For Senior Director of Distribution Centers, Joe Veek, continued expansion means finding new ways to distribute Quick Trip's products. You know, we're looking at taking a pivot and, and actually building a different distribution center in DeForest, Wisconsin. So that's going to be something that is a strategy moving forward to ensure that we can support our stores um, into the future. Although Quick Trip is looking at an addition in Dane County, that doesn't mean the company is abandoning La Crosse County, which has been its home since 1973. So we're actually investing $150 million um, here at our facilities in La Crosse for our production facilities. Um, it's going to create 500 new jobs as well. And as the company continues to expand, the goal remains the same, to serve customers and community more effectively than anyone else and to make a difference in someone's life. For County by County, Alex Loroff, First News at 9. Well, thanks again for watching this presentation of our County by County series. And if you'd like to relive any of tonight's stories, head to wiproud.com. I'm Alex Loroff. Have a great night.